Hi, my name is Jean Hinchliffe. I'm 16 years old and I'm a lead organiser with School Strike for Climate. So School Strike for Climate are a, an enormous group, actually it's now an international group, of teenagers and actually some primary school aged children who work together to organise giant climate strikes. We were this tiny little group and no one thought it would work and maybe it would get a few hundred people and suddenly it was growing and growing and it just exploded and on that first day we got 5,000 in Sydney and 15,000 nationally and from there it's just grown to a point where our most recent strike which was on September 20 we had over 300,000 people nationally with millions worldwide. At All About Women I'm talking with a group of other amazing females about um, environmentalism and the climate crisis today and it, sort of that passion being driven by anger. So I am looking at Clementine Ford's speech from 2017, which is called Hate Mail. It's talking about um, all the hate mail she re receives from a bunch of different guys. The school strikes as a whole, we receive so much hate from a massive variety of people, although I do notice <laughs> most of the time it's quite similar. It's all from slightly older guys. I mean, not all of it, but a really large majority of it and it was interesting seeing a lot of parallels between the hate that she was receiving and the hate that the movement gets. See, as a young person receiving that sort of criticism, I deal with it in a very similar way to Clementine Ford in that I treat it as a joke and I think it's hilarious. I get these insane messages and giant comments on Facebook and me and my friends will do dramatic readings of it. We just think it's, it's ridiculous because the people doing it they're just jokes pretty much because if their only defence and if their only argument against us is belittling us and crapping on us pretty much, then clearly we've won. Thank you so much to the Sydney Opera House and to All About Women for inviting me today to deliver this talk. It is a fun one. I'm going to be walking people through um, hate mail. A guide through the letters men send me. <laughs> and I will say that there are going to be some topics that are raised in here and some words that are mentioned and, and certainly some threats that are issued against my person that may be triggering for some people in the audience. It really is true what they say that sunshine is the best disinfectant. But also a good disinfectant is laughter. And it is true what Margaret Atwood said that women are afraid that men will kill them, and men are afraid that women will laugh at them. I've been writing about feminism and actively feministing for about a decade now, and I certainly didn't begin it in the way that I have, have ended up now, which is basically with little to no regard for what men think about anything. Um, the, when I began, it was very much in that sense of like devoting a quarter of every column or a quarter of every interview that I did or um, standing up at a panel and saying, well, I'd just like to acknowledge all of the men in the room to the point almost where you'd get the men to stand up and you'd give them a big round of applause. Thank you all so much for coming and caring about what women think. Um, but what I realised was that that didn't work at all because not only did the men who came to events like that not really do anything to change or dismantle their own privilege or interrogate it because what ultimately ended up happening was them feeling like, well, I've done my part. I've turned up and listened to the women speak and now I can leave. Um, in fact, I've had men say that same thing to me when they've emailed me emails much nicer than these ones. Um, it was in deciding to stop caring about what they thought that I started to notice real change being made. Jared Wright once said to me, all you post about is being a feminist. You're almost as bad as the problem you're trying to fight. You're an extremist. Pretty soon you'll wager she had <laughs> on men. Just make sure you blow yourself up first. Cheers. I do give points for she had, I love a good pun. Jay says, you're what? Hungry and have tattoos. Isn't it disgusting when women eat? Gross. Um, yuck, how disrespectful and degrading for young ladies. That's no role model. A girl with tattoos, an unhealthy lifestyle, and degrading men. Not something a future mother or father-in-law would like highly on. <laughs> Practice what you preach. Anonymous asked a question. You'd think someone that fat would have decent tits. I'm disappointed. So am I. 
another anonymous said, all the best for your professional trolling career in 2014. Your hate, mocking and sexism only vindicates those you're trying to silence. Now, just on the silencing thing, this theme of men being silenced when you refuse to listen to what they say is very big. Um, quite often what I'll do actually is screen cap things like this and signal boost it to a much larger audience, in which I'm still accused of silencing men. I think, well, you're so proud of what you've said. I'm, I'm really just, I'm helping you out, you know. Robert Fuller, who has emailed me a number of times and always seems to go with the theme of lemons, Subject line, sucking lemons. <laughs> Content, stop sucking lemons, makes you sour and bitchy. <laughs> Two things women should never be. Delicious irony though, that we're, we're entering the territory that I like to call, why do you care about rape? Because no one will rape you anyway. Delicious irony though, the uglies like you, just in case I didn't know he was talking about me, <laughs> who will never be raped are always banging on about it. Lol about the guy drinking wine with you till 4 a.m. who still didn't find you bedworthy. Now, that, that's just because I'd written an article about how actually what women expect when they go home with someone and say, I don't want to have sex with you, is not to have sex. Actually, what they expect is not to be raped. Actually, what they expect is to have their bodies and their words respected. And uh, I told a story about how my current partner and uh, baby daddy, um, just, they could have been two separate people. <laughs> but the first night that we went out on a date, I went back to his house, we got very drunk, and I went back to his house, and we had some more wine, and I was wasted. I was embarrassingly wasted. And I said, can I sleep on your couch? I didn't intend to do anything with him. Um, and he said, yep, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, he got me a blanket, and he went and slept in his room, and I slept on the couch. And in, in the article, I said, and you know, what happened? I woke up the next morning, not raped, because that's actually what I expect when I go to someone's house and say, I don't want to have sex with you. Um, and someone like Robert, and, and I've had many emails along this line, cannot understand how you can argue on the one hand that actually men are a lot better than that, that you can expect more of men than that, and that there, are, there is evidence of men being better than that, being basically decent human beings. But because it's always, of course, women's fault, everything that happens to us, everything that we do invites assault or invites criticism of some kind. It still became my fault that the boy I went on a date with was a basically decent person who didn't sexually assault me. It was still my fault. Anyway, so that was a little background there. Um, I know, look, it's, it's, it's funny territory to, to walk on because, of course, this is a very triggering subject for a lot of people, and I, that's why I wanted to issue the disclaimer at the start. I hope that no one's feeling... Um, I hope that no one's letting the words of men like Con affect them in this session today because he literally is meaningless and could be wiped off of the Earth by an asteroid tomorrow, and it would not affect anyone on this planet. <laughs> I, am, I am positive about that. It would actually improve the world. <laughs> Um, and he is one of many. So, you know, maybe it's because I hear these things all the time that I've become so desensitised to it, but it just signifies so much ignorance and so much lack of awareness about the world that we live in. So, one thing that I tend to say to, to people like that, because I've always found that humour, which is why I try and, like, inject humour into this, humour, for me, has been the best disinfectant against this kind of toxic bilge, because... Like Margaret Atwood said, these men hate being laughed at. If you give them your earnestness, if you try and engage with them, I mean, there are some people who you can engage with and some people who you can hope to educate, but they're the people who want to have a rational dialogue with you in the first place. These people are not interested in rational dialogue. These people are interested in uh, doing what has been done to women for thousands of years, which is degrading us and humiliating us and threatening to defile us in an attempt to silence us, in an attempt to buy and believe the lie that we not only do not have power, but that we don't deserve power, that we don't deserve to be treated like equal human beings in this world, that we don't deserve to have a role in shaping this world or in deciding what the conversation of this world will be. They're very threatened by women who um, challenge everything that makes them feel comfortable about their own limited power, about their own feelings of insecurity and self-doubt. And I have no sympathy for their feelings of insecurity or self-doubt because of the way that they behave. But they're not coming from a position of any kind of power over you. Um, 
men of the internet who use anonymous accounts to try and troll you and bully you and degrade you. These are the sorts of things that they think. So responding with humor is very effective. Responding with uh, questions that they can't really get their way out of is also effective. So like I said, one thing that I always say to people who say this to me, and I'm sure many of you have had someone say similar to you, that you're too ugly, unattractive, etc., to have X happen to you, is do you spend a lot of time thinking about which women you would or wouldn't rape? Because that's basically what it comes down to. You're too ugly and fat for anyone to rape. That means you've thought about it, David. It means you've thought about it, Con. Um, and they can deny that all they like, but I know the truth. <laughs> so I got a man fired because he called me a slut on my Facebook page, which is not the worst thing that anyone's ever called me at all, but he did it on a post where another man, I'd screen capped a shot from another man saying, I would gibber less with a cock in my mouth. And I posted this to show the kinds of things that women get sent on the internet. And Michael Nolan, who worked at the Meriton Service Department Group in Sydney, as a supervising manager, just came and commented, slut. Now, Michael Nolan wasn't smart enough to not have his employer listed on his Facebook page, um, alongside all of the racist jokes that he had published there. So I just screen capped it in some of those, and I sent it to his employer and posted it on my Facebook page. And I guess they just didn't really want the bad publicity. So they said, well, we'll review it. And then they got back to me about 24 hours later and they said that we've, they terminated his contract. So they said, could you please tell your followers on your Facebook page that we've done that so they stop emailing us? <laughs> um, so I did that. And of course, then the, uh, the bat signal went out all over the world that a woman somewhere had stood up for herself and you know, brought down some consequences on a man and they did not like it. I'll tell you that much. Um, so the abuse really ramped up and, you know, that's why I get things like I dare you to try and get me fired. I mean, his business is going really good, but other people, <laughs> I just say to them things like we'd have to have a job for that to happen. Um, what do you think was the catalyst that started you being so angry and disillusioned with men? Aren't you worried that you will grow up, grow old and lonely? Do you believe in family? Where are the statistics that shows our society as being anti-woman? Where are the statistics? <laughs> you say you believe in rape culture. What do you consider as being rape? <laughs> why do you hate men? Travis Sandal asks me. After all that, why would I possibly hate men? Um, and this is something that I don't actually often say in front of people um, or on panels or anything like that, and certainly not in articles anymore, because I just think it's such a massive waste of time and a distraction. And feminism is not about men, and feminism is certainly not about hating men. But when I say that it's not about hating men, I don't mean in that reassuring way, like, don't worry about it. Feminism's not really about hating men. We're not threatening to you. I mean, feminism's not about men at all. So it needs to, people need to stop framing it as if somehow men's feelings are the most important part of the equation. Feminism is about liberating women, and everyone else, but women especially, from patriarchal oppression. It's about making the world a better place for everyone. And at its core, one of the things that I feel feminism is about is about women not hating themselves. So it's not about whether or not we hate men. I couldn't care less whether or not someone thinks that I hate men. I know what I believe about stuff, and. They, if they need to feel that about me to not engage with the things that I talk about, then that's on them. But for me, feminism is because I don't hate myself anymore. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs>